Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on Channel 22 right here on Port Shopping Live. If you haven't met me yet or haven't seen me around the ship, my name is Lee and I'm here on board as your port and shopping guide. A little bit quickly about what I do before I begin this amazing watch seminar that I'm so excited to give you, is I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm here on board, Royal Caribbean has hired me to help you guys and help you shop in your ports of call. For many, many years people were flocking to the Caribbean, making sure they came to these cruise ships just to go shopping in the Caribbean because they knew they were going to be saving tons of money and having an amazing selection on any items they were shopping for. So because so many people were taking cruises just to be doing that and saving thousands of dollars on precious watches, jewelry, and fine items they're seeing out in port, Royal Caribbean decided to put somebody on board who was an expert in timepieces, in diamonds, jewelry, and other things, and an expert in their ports of call. That way we could help keep you educated and confident and guaranteed while you're out shopping in your ports of call. So that's why I'm on board. I am your port and shopping guy and I am your resident watch expert. Make sure you stick around here on Port Shopping Live. You can see some of my diamond and gemstone seminars and live talks from this voyage to give you all the updated current to the day information about the shopping in your ports of call. Well, today I'm gonna to be giving you one of my favorite seminars. I am an absolute fanatic for watches and for timepieces. Every single timepiece you see sitting in front of me here today is part of my personal collection and I have this personal collection on board for you. So if you're interested in seeing any of the pieces that I have here, with me, just give me a call on the port shopping hotline or check your cruise compass for my desk hours. I'll make sure you get to see these pieces in person. So today I'm going to dive into the watch world and I'm doing this all off script, just on camera for you to give you an idea of my experience in the industry, what watches are all about, a little bit of history of time, and then of course I'm going to be giving you all the information about shopping this cruise. There isn't going to be a watch that I talk about today that isn't available for you for the best prices in the planet all tax and duty free on this cruise vacation. So please let me know. Call your port shopping hotline or stop by my desk and let me know if you have anything you're looking for. I'd be happy to save you time and money in your ports of call. After all, that's exactly why I'm here. So let's get started a little bit. I'm going to be talking about watches today, timepieces, and we're going to run through some really interesting facts, things you have to know, and then we get to talk about brands themselves, what timepieces are out there right now, and what the watch industry is doing these days. So let's go ahead and get started. You know, an interesting part about my job, I help so many people shopping in these ports of call. Most of what I deal with deals with diamonds, deals with gems, deals with jewelry. And that's amazing. I love doing that. I love working with people. I've worked for some of the top GIA certified gemologists on the planet. But I'm a man. I'm a man's man at heart. And one thing that I think really captivates the attention of men more than anything else in the luxury world is watches and timepiece wearing. You know, a watch is very important to a man's wardrobe. They say that a watch is one of the first things that people notice on a man, their accessories. It's something that tells where you've been in life. It gives you an idea of what somebody feels about their stylistic choices, how far they've made it to in life, and the fact that they pay attention to the small things. The details actually stand out a lot more a man's outfit than you'd think. Plus, it's a great example of what you've done with your life and what your aspirations are for the future. I will liken watches to cars many times throughout this presentation. A car will do the same thing for you. Pulling up in a Lamborghini and stepping out looks a lot different to most people than pulling up in a Honda and stepping out. It has a statement about who you are. But uh, Mr. Newman actually once said, the reason I love fine Swiss timepieces is because you can't park a Ferrari in the boardroom. And that's a very interesting way to say it. They're perfect for having out on the golf course. They're perfect for having inside the boardroom. They're great for business. It's something that shows a little bit more elegance and attention to detail. Plus, it's one of the only things that men really pass down from generation to generation. It's become a huge part of the familial structure. And one thing that's very important to me, at least in the watch industry, is heritage. Where did watch companies come from? What are the familial ties behind this watch? watch company and do they still represent that and employ that in their watchmaking and their ideals for design in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, I just want to show you a couple of cool videos to get you excited about what we're talking about today. The first one actually is from a man named Felix Baumgartner. And I don't know if you remember who Felix Baumgartner was, but Felix Baumgartner was the man who jumped out of a hot air balloon at 128 thousand feet of elevation and this is just something that was absolutely nuts so why don't you take a look at this for me and you're gonna see something really neat here okay this is uh, you may wonder why this is a uh, in a watch presentation but I'll tell it to you in a little bit yeah Felix Baumgartner he was the only man to ever jump from the stratosphere so I have done the 
highest tandem skydive on the planet. It's actually in Fort Lauderdale. Port Canaveral, maybe. 18,000 feet. Felix Baumgartner did this jump from the stratosphere. 128,000 feet. Amazing. And if I can give you a tip, I suppose, if you can see the curvature of the Earth with your naked eye, don't jump. <laughs> there it is. This is the mission director. We are at float. He said he was terrified. He didn't want to do this. Red Bull wanted him to. He lost control, actually, went unconscious. You can see him spinning right here. Swish, swish, swish. Completely unconscious. Regained consciousness, went into a controlled spin, and his body was the only person to ever break through the sound barrier. It's just the human body. Unbelievable. That's his mom. Very worried, I'm sure. Incredible. Well, needless to say, Felix Baumgartner survived this entire ordeal and is the only person to ever break through the sound barrier with nothing other than the human body. Now, the reason that this is in my watch seminar is that this was actually sponsored by the watch company Zenith. And Felix Baumgartner actually wore a Zenith El Primero on the outside of his spacesuit when he jumped 128,000 feet from the stratosphere and broke the sound barrier with nothing other than his human body and a watch. So today we're talking about collectible items. Today we're talking about fine Swiss engineering, microscopic engineering, turning moving parts into the smallest possible working fluid motion that you can with no batteries, with no computers, just gears and springs inside these mechanisms. And with these pieces, with these art, collectible pieces, they can withstand things like 128 forces of gravity coming out of the, the stratosphere. That's something that's on one end of the spectrum, super high impact places, pieces that you can take anywhere in the world and will be with you for a lifetime until you pass them down onto another person. But the other end of the spectrum is this. Take a look at this very cool video. I love this. One more to start us off with from Cartier. It'll give you a bit of an image of the other side of the watchmaking industry. And this is something that has a lot of symbolism, I think. So look closely to the symbols here. The clock breaks apart. Watches were built from the same mechanisms that old grandfather clocks were. The stone in the ground. Miniature pieces fitting together fluidly. creating elegant motion. I love this video. This to me is one of the coolest watchmaking videos Cartier. ever made. It's so simple, it's so elegant. Essentially what Cartier is showing you is that the pieces that are coming into these watches are all tiny intricate movement style pieces that create fluidity of motion, which they're symbolizing with the panther. They show you the symbol of the stone, that these designs have been designed since the beginning of time. I mean, the first timekeeping device was the sundial, of course. And then moving into elements of the future, the spaceship docking together, showing that their designs, at least, their aesthetics, will be timeless and carried 
forward into the future. That's a great way to say it. And my favorite thing about the end of this video is where they have the little boy looking at the case and the father puts his hand on his back and says, yes, maybe now you finally understand and one day these things will all be for you. So very cool stuff. That's the other side of the watch industry, the build for aesthetics, the desire to have smooth shaped lines and to show off a little bit what it is that you keep in your life and what it is that your time and your presence is worth. So that's something very interesting. Let me give you a little bit of history about watches themselves to help you understand where we are today. And then we'll also talk about a little bit about componentry and then we'll get into the really cool stuff, which I think talking about models, showing you pieces, showing you photos and some really cool videos for you. So to give you a little bit of history about the watch industry, watches started off in pretty much the 16th century. Uh, one of the first watches that was ever built was called the Nuremberg's Egg. And Nuremberg's Egg was essentially a small egg-shaped device about this big. And you'd open up the top of it and it would have a minute hand and it would have an hour hand. And that watch, you'd wind it once a day and it would keep track of time. At the end of the day, it was accurate to within about three to four hours, right? <laughs> but, but that wasn't the point. The point wasn't about timekeeping at that point. The point was that they could build things like that. They had taken the micro-engineering from grandfather clocks and started building them into smaller and smaller pieces of componentry. The reason that all this started, and all this started in Switzerland, the reason that all this started in Switzerland was because at that point in time they outlawed the usage and wearage of gems and jewels to show class and society. So since it was against the law to wear those things, they had to start creating other pieces to show. And the Nuremberg's egg wasn't about keeping time. It was about pulling it out of the soiree. It was about showing people that you had one. And it was about, it was about a self-explanation of status symbol. It was never about timekeeping at that point. Well, the, the pocket watches got better. They got smaller. The pieces became more accurate. Things started using uh, more in intricate movements and better technologies inside of them. And they began evolving late through the 16th century. Now, pocket watches didn't come into play until about the 1900s when wrist, I'm sorry, wrist watches didn't come into play. Wrist watches didn't come into play until about the 1900s. Now, at that point in time, we did have very accurate movements. We did have very accurate systems inside of the pocket watches since they had been getting better for about 300 years. But at this point in time, there were a lot of industries that needed the usage of correct mechanics. The military was one of them. The train and automotive industry was the other one. If you've ever heard of the term he's on the ball? The reason he's on the ball was because the automotive and train industry were using ball watches at the time to synchronize their movements. And they were synchronizing them with automatic movements, mechanical movements that had no batteries inside of them. And the, the deficit of being inaccurate at that point in time was massive collisions. Uh, airline pilots were demanding that they had to strap their watches to their wrists with pieces of their suit because it was much more accurate to them to read the timing of where they were flying and how long they had been when it was on their wrist as opposed to having to pull it out of their pocket. And the same with the military squadrons. They were strapping it to their wrist when they were in the trenches that could read the time to synchronize their battle movements. At this point in time, we've made the move in the 1900s that wrist watches needed to be more accurate. We were using watches to keep a track of time at that point and not just for status symbols. Now, something crazy happened in the 1960s. This is not very long ago. 1960s, this happened. Something called the Quartz Movement began. The Quartz Movement actually revolutionized the way watchmaking had ever been built. We did find out, actually the Japanese found out a way to use batteries inside watches and use electricity to keep track of time. The way that they did it was they found a small little piece of quartz that would send electricity through the piece of quartz and it would vibrate so nobly that you could actually use that to keep track of time inside these timepieces. What happened with that was that this small movement, the quartz movement that was allowing the Japanese to produce mass quantities of watches and making them at very affordable prices, that practically destroyed the entirety of the Swiss watchmaking industry as it had existed for about 350 years in the past. That means that no longer were we needing these tiny little mechanical parts, hundreds of moving parts inside watches because we could mass produce them much faster and more accurately. It almost phased out the collectability, the wearability, and the art of fine Swiss timekeeping. Well, something happened in 1972 called the Royal Oak Revival. A company called Audemars Piquet actually brought out a watch called the Royal Oak, which pretty much reinvigorated the entirety of the Swiss watchmaking industry. Audemars Piquet is considered classically to be one of the top three nicest watch brands on the planet. And when they came out with this watch, it was an octagonal bezeled watch that was shaped like a porthole. It was inspired by the design of the diver's helmets at the time with those big screw down clamps. I'm sure you've seen those. 
Now what they did was they put out a phrase that says it takes more than money to wear the royal oak. And what they did right there was reinvigorate the Swiss industry and reinvigorate watch collectors everywhere that it takes more than money to own a fine Swiss timepiece. It takes care, it takes paying attention to tradition and heritage and where these movements and artistry came from. And so now we have both of them nowadays. We have inexpensive quartz watches that you can buy for $10 at Walmart that will keep track of time, or you've got a full range of beautiful collectible artistically styled pieces from around the world called fine Swiss timepieces. Now a couple of frequently asked questions I get very often. How do I choose the right watch for myself? And what I'll say to you right there is that it depends on the person. In my humble opinion, every man should have at least three watches. You should have one for sport, for taking out any time you're going to be rugged on your watch. You should have one for everyday wear, which is something you should be proud of and happy to show off to friends and family no matter what you're doing. It should have range, meaning you could dress it up or dress it down. And you should have a dress watch. And a dress watch is something that you can wear with a suit or a tuxedo or if you're a female with a nice dress or a gown. Now, how do I choose the right watch for me? For me, I would say A, determine your budget and B, determine your lifestyle or at least what that watch is going to be used for in that lifestyle. Of course, there are watches that get very expensive. There are watches, I think I was holding a Hublot All Sapphire Tourbillon LaFerrari about a month ago and that watch is one of five on the planet. It's about $450 thousand dollars so clearly that watch is out of the budget range for most watch collectors so determine your budget you can get absolutely amazing timepieces for any amount of money that you want to spend and then of course determine your lifestyle. What is your watch going to be used for? You're probably not going to be taking a Cartier scuba diving. And then the next question is, you know, what really makes the difference between a $100 watch, a $1,000 watch, a $10,000 watch, a $100,000 watch, so on and so forth. And to me, it's really broken down into four things. Uh, and the first category of that is called componentry. What is your watch built out of? Mainly that's the case, the casing of the watch, the shape of it, what is it made out of? It's a, if it's made out of gold, gold if it has diamonds in it, your watch is going to be worth a lot more. If it's made out of exclusive materials like carbon fiber and tungsten, of course it's going to be worth a lot more. Most people like steel or leather or most people like titanium, pieces like that. And then the other part of componentry is the movement inside of the watch. If we can liken watches to cars again, that's going to be the engine inside of the watch. What is the timepiece time piece device inside of it that's keeping track of time? How well was it built? How good is the engineering inside of it? And what is the heritage of the company? If they've been doing this for hundreds of years, they probably have a lot better machined mechanisms to weigh the, the way they can make their movements than brand, brand new companies. Also, the prestige of ownership is going to be the next category, and that's really where most people are putting their money into watches. You have to think about it like cars, you have to think about it like art. What is the prestige of ownership? The two most prestigious elements of ownership that I would classify this category into, number one is recognizability. How many people recognize your watch? The number one most recognizable watch company on the planet, without a doubt, bar none, is Rolex. But some people don't want watches that are high in recognizability. Some people want low recognizability because sometimes it doesn't matter how many people recognize your watch, it just matters on who it is. People don't like to be so gaudy sometimes, they don't want people noticing that they have an expensive timepiece on. And the next portion of an element of prestige is exclusivity. And exclusivity is a perfect metaphor to think about cars. You know, Hondas and Fords, not so exclusive that much. You see them all the time on the street. What about BMWs and Mercedes? Do you see them all the time at the grocery store? Yeah, maybe you see quite a few in the parking lot Lot, but there is a more element of prestige of ownership in those brands. Think about it even more. How about Maseratis? How about a Rolls Royce? How about a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? They're very recognizable cars, but the prestige of ownership is very high because they have very, very high exclusivity. There are not many people that have them. You'll see them, you'll, wow, look at that Lamborghini driving down the street. And that's the way a lot of people think about watches themselves. So all those things considered, we find the right balance for you. And there, you're gonna find the timepiece that you love. Other frequently asked questions, how do I know if I'm getting a good deal? Well, let me tell you this first of all. First of all, never buy a watch on the internet. There are so many people that reproduce fake movements on the internet, that reproduce fake watches on the internet. Most of these watch companies, they do not sell watches on the internet. So make sure you never go online for a watch because you can be getting taken advantage of more than pretty much anything else on the planet. I once had a guy brought me a $30,000 a uh, presidential gold Rolex with an $8 movement inside of it because he had bought it on the internet and he basically had 
a $6,000 gold case, but I'd paid way too much because there was not an actual Rolex inside of that watch. So never buy a watch on the internet. Next up, always buy a watch in a tax and duty free market. These brands right here are world globalized brands. You can buy a Tag Heuer, you can buy a Bremont, you can buy a Hublot or a Rolex anywhere on the planet. They set their brands, they set their pricing worldwide. It never changes. But when you shop in a tax and duty free market, these brands authorize a discount. They allow retailers and their retail partners to sell these watches at a much lower price point than you will find them anywhere else in the world. And on top of that, you pay no tax on any of these watches. Let's just take a watch for example, okay? Let's take Breitling for an example. If you were gonna buy a Breitling in Los Angeles and it was a $10,000 watch, for instance, you'd pay $10,000 MSRP plus tax. You'd pay 10,900. If you were to buy that in the Caribbean, Breitling authorizes a 15% discount on that watch and you pay no tax. So instead of paying almost $11,000 at home, you come to the Caribbean and you can save almost $2,000 on that timepiece just from one single item. That's the reason people come to the Caribbean. That's the reason they hire people like me on board to go through this with you and make sure you're educated and prepared when you're out in your ports of call. And that goes for every timepiece. Bulova, for example, gives a 35% off discount and they have watches starting at just a couple hundred dollars. So whether you're looking for something collectible you're going to be passing on in the future, or whether you're looking for something that's just gonna be everyday wear, do your watch shopping here in the Caribbean in your ports of call where you're going to see the biggest and best selection. Give me a call anytime you need. I'm here to help you go shopping to find exactly what it is that you're looking for. So let's talk a little bit about the componentry inside the watch for a moment. I'm going to tell you a little bit about movements. Now there's multiple kinds of movements. There's mainly three kinds of movements. One of the kinds of movements is the quartz movement. Now the quartz movement is a movement, like I told you, where the Japanese invented it. They put a battery inside the watch and that little piece of quartz will vibrate so nobly that the watch will tick. Now anytime you see a watch ticking with the second hands that go tick, 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 that's a quartz watch because that surge of electricity goes through that piece of quartz and it fires the mechanism inside the watch to tick the second hand one more second. Now those are very inexpensive to create, they're inexpensive to purchase, they use a battery for power, they're quite reliable and they're excellent timekeepers. So for that reason, those are the majority of watches in the world where people are buying them from Walmart or you're buying them uh, for $10 here and there. They do keep good time for you, but you will be replacing these watches most likely in the future within a couple years. Most of them use less expensive componentry and less expensive crystal on the front. They'll take damage more easily, which is why you're not paying so much for them, and you will be using them in the future, or you will be uh, replacing them in the future. The next two type of movements are called mechanical movements. Now a mechanical movement is something, like I mentioned, that doesn't have a battery inside of it. You're only using gears and springs and micro-engineered timekeeping technology from hundreds of years ago. Almost all of these watches are from Switzerland. There's two types of mechanical movements. One of them is the manual wind movement where you physically will take the crown of the watch like your grandfather used to do and you'd wind the crown of the watch to put power into the mainspring and that mainspring is going to put pressure onto the flywheel which is going to bounce back and forth and it's going to put energy into the watch. Now with all mechanical movements you're going to see the second hand in the watch not ticking like tick 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 but it's going to be sweeping consistently. It's actually ticking so quickly with up to 10 times a second that it looks like the second hand has fluid motion and is not actually ticking, jolting from one dial marker to the other. Now the next kind of mechanical movement is called an automatic movement. It's pretty much the same thing as a manual movement where you're putting power into the watch, but instead of twisting it with your fingers, there's a small rotor in the back of the watch where as you move your hand throughout the day, that rotor spins around and it adds power into your watch automatically. That way if you're wearing your watch, you're always going to get an accurate time and it's going to be keeping power inside of it. Those are the pieces that almost everybody is collecting nowadays. Those are the pieces that most likely you're going to be shopping for here on this cruise, are automatic timepieces. Other things that are very important to consider, the watch crystal on the front of your watch should be sapphire crystal. There's a couple types of crystal. One of them is mineral crystal. You're going to see this in most quartz watches. It will scratch. You'll have big lines on it after a couple years and you're going to be replacing your watch. What you're going to want to see is that sapphire 
sapphire crystal. Sapphire crystal is a nine on the Mohs hardness scale. In that case, it won't be scratched by anything in the world except maybe a diamond could scratch that. But if you keep your watch away from a diamond, it should look perfectly clean and perfectly unscratched for the rest of your life. You know, that reminds me of a funny quote that someone told me once. They said, people don't just own a fine Swiss timepiece. They merely hold on to it until the next generation. And that is partially in due to sapphire crystal because sapphire crystal will not scratch for the entirety of the lifetime. Other things you're going to want to consider about your watch, the casing of it. What does it look like? What is it built out of? Is it sleek and going to be sliding in and out of a tuxedo sleeve? Or is it something more rugged that's built for high water resistance that you're going to be taking scuba diving or running in the park or things like that? Also take into consideration what's it built out of. If it's built out of titanium and tungsten and carbon fiber and gold, it's going to be worth more than if it's built out of steel. Or it depends on how rigid, uh, rugged, rigid, rugged, how rugged that timepiece is and whether or not it's going to take damage. Also, lastly, consider your bracelets and your buckles. If you want something that's dressy, I highly recommend black leather. Many people like the all steel look where you get a little bit more range, I would say, where you can dress it up or you can dress it down. It's great for if you're out here in the Caribbean, you don't sweat into the leather and it can be easily cleaned. Pieces like that. And the clasps and buckles. One thing that you should take into consideration if you do want a leather strap, if you do want a dressy timepiece, it's good to look for a deployment buckle. That means that you can have a deployment where it allows you to open your watch face up, even though it is leather, with a buckle as opposed to pulling it through the pin buckle system that you'd see in something like a belt things like that. Just things to take into consideration. You'll also see some complications on watches. The most common complication is a second hand, but you'll also see other complications like tracking the date, tracking the day, or a chronograph where you'll see all three of the little dials on the watch. That's basically a stopwatch. You can push pusher A, it will start the stopwatch. You can push it again to stop it, or you can push pusher B to reset it. Those are very handy to have. Other complications you're going to see are things like a moon phase where you can decide or you can set it to whether or not it can keep track of the phases of the moon. Very interesting. You can have a power reserve inside of your watch. It'll tell you how much power your watch has left in it, whether or not it's going to be needing to be wound or if you need to pick it up and wear it for a few hours, it'll show you how many hours left is in it. Most mechanical watches, they have a power reserve of about 48 hours, which means if your power reserve has died, the watch will stop ticking and you'll need to wind your watch again and probably reset it for you to wear it again. If you do own mechanical watches, it's probably good for you to buy a watch winder. Here's a watch winder here and what it will do is actually spin your watches on its own with a little battery inside of it or if it's plugged into the wall. That's going to keep your timepieces wound. So if you own more than one automatic timepiece, you can put them in there and the next time you pull your watch out to change your pieces, you'll always have your time at the correct time and you won't have to reset your watch again. So those are very interesting things to be considering in your watches. You're going to want to see something that's specific for yourself. I tend to love chronographs and I like seeing lots of different complications and lots of different dials and faces on the watch. It's also important to consider colors as well. I like very unique watches. So now let's talk a little, about, a little bit about brands and a little bit about availability of this cruise. And this for me is the fun part. Now we get to talk about what it is that's available for you here on this cruise and what you're going to see out in port. Just so you know, all these watches here, there is a 0% chance that you can find any of these watches at a better price anywhere in the world. A 0% chance, that's a fact and you can quote me on it. Because here in the tax and duty free market of the Caribbean, these watch brands are giving their number one highest discounts you're going to see in any other prices around the world. So you've got discount prices, you've got an incredible selection. I can find anything through the spectrum. I've worked for over 50 different watch brands. I've represented almost every single watch brand in the world. I've been to Switzerland multiple times. I've been through all the factories. I've seen how they've been created. I've met moguls in the industry and I'll tell you something right now. After years of experience of working in this industry, there isn't a better selection of watches in Switzerland than there is here in the Caribbean. You've got everything from the top of the line, Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantine, Long & Sons and Breguet, all the way down to introductory level timepieces like Raymond Weil, Bulova, and all other kinds of Seiko. You can see Citizen, all different kinds of neat pieces out here for you. The brand I'm going to start with today is a brand that I have a very, very strong affinity for and affiliation with, and that is a brand that almost 
everybody knows. It's the second most famous and most recognizable brand on the planet, and that is a company called Tag Heuer. Now, Tag Heuer is an incredible family-owned Swiss watchmaking company that was started in the 1860s in Geneva, Switzerland, actually just outside of Geneva, Switzerland. Tag Heuer has always had an incredible relationship with the automotive industry and has been the purveyor of Ferrari as well as Formula One for many, many years. Now, Tag Heuer, for many reasons, is an incredible watch to start for for the first timepiece collector. In Tag Heuer, I call them one of the best value propositions in timepieces that you're going to get in any watch brand in the planet. Tag Heuer not only is one of the most recognizable watch brands in the world, which means you're going to get people recognizing these watches on your, on your wrist and saying, hey, that's a beautiful Carrera or a beautiful Monaco. But these timepieces also come at a great price for you. In addition to being a highly recognizable watch, these timepieces have been uh, awarded eight out of 12 medals in the Grand Prix of Geneva's watchmaking competitions. The Geneva Grand Prix is essentially the watchmaking Olympics. It happens once a year where they commemorate things like innovation, quality of design, quality of aesthetics, or pushing the boundaries in the forefront of engineering and timepieces themselves. In 2010, Tag Heuer actually won the gold award for having the best watch in the entire planet in the under 10,000 price division. That was the Carrera 1887 movement. This watch, the 1887 movement, is actually less than half of the price of its competitors, which in my opinion, that makes Tag Heuer one of the best movements for your money in the entire world. You get a very high quality movement inside of the watch with great aesthetics, you get a great history and heritage in the company, and you get something that's highly recognizable on your wrist. The Caribbean prices out here are guaranteed to be the lowest at a 15% discount more than any other place you're going to see it across the world. Here's a couple of beautiful timepieces to consider. This is the Formula One version of the Tag Heuer watches. Their introductory level price points start at less than a thousand dollars for amazing sapphire crystal all steel bands and beautiful quartz and automatic movements you're also going to see their aqua racer collection classically considered to be one of the primary diving watches in the planet these watches will be classified in anywhere from 200 300 or 500 meters of water resistance makes them an excellent watch for scuba diving and also a great sports watch for many other pieces you're going to see some pretty cool models of the aqua racer one of my favorites is the caribbean exclusive exclusive limited edition aqua racer. This aqua racer has a Caribbean map on the back with a very bright shiny blue dial and it has a full map of the Caribbean in gold. That map of the Caribbean will show you everything from Florida to the Dominican Republic, Cuba, all of the Eastern Caribbean wall from St. Thomas, St. Martin, all of Tortola, Antigua, Barbados, St. Lucia, you name it, Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, anywhere you go. It's got all of them on there, and if you're going to Grand Cayman this cruise, there's a Guy Harvey limited edition watch, and you can have him even sign your booklet, because Guy Harvey's out there in Grand Cayman as well. Super cool stuff. You will see some of their great models coming out this year in their Carrera line. I have two Carreras. I absolutely love the Tag Heuer Carrera, classically considered to be the nicest of their watches and the most popular of their watches. This features a very nice 43 to 45 millimeter bezel. That's the size of the watch on the front, and it has a great range to it. This is a watch that I highly recommend for dress watch and I highly recommend for an everyday timepiece. My Carrera Caliber 16, beautiful watch with a nice chronograph on it for timekeeping, also has a mother of pearl dial on it. That's my everyday watch and I absolutely adore it. So come see it on my wrist if you're looking for one of those. You'll see Tag Heuer in the movies often. If any of you are a fan of Breaking Bad, Jesse Pinkman actually gave the Tag Heuer Caliber 12 to Walt as a gift in that movie. I have a very similar watch, the Caliber 11 right here. I'll show you that in a moment. You'll also see it in the Born Identity and in Rush, and probably the most famous of any of the Tag Heuer's in film was this one right here, the Tag Heuer Caliber 11, which was worn on the wrist of Steve McQueen during the filming of Le Mans back in 1970. That is an icon, and it became one of the most popular watches throughout history. I had to go ahead and collect one and add it to my collection, so please come see me if you'd like to see that watch. These are all available for you in your ports of call and I can get you a great tax and duty-free discount on them. You'll also see some of the presidents wearing Tag Heuer watches. Both Bush Sr. and Obama wear a Tag Heuer during their presidential campaigns. Here's some new models that are coming out for you. This is the Artun Senna Formula One watch, the classic race car driver. They're also coming out with a new movement called the Heuer 01. This is the first time that Tag Heuer has done a fully skeletonized movement, which means that they can actually create uh, 
a dial where you can see into the componentry on the dial, and this is something that is very hard to do in the under $10,000 range. That means that Tag Hoyer is actually offering you a fully skeletonized movement with an all handmade in-house movement built by Tag Hoyer for less than a half of the price of any of its competitors. So if you want to be wearing a watch that looks like a $10,000 watch and doesn't have to pay and you don't have to pay for it, check out the Hoyer 01. Ask me for where to find it this cruise. There's a large selection of these watches in Diamonds International and many places throughout your cruise. There's lots of different options in these color frames from different cobalt in the designs to gold and leather and black steel. Amazing intricate componentry inside these watches for you to check out. You'll also see some beautiful ladies timepieces. You'll see the, see the new ladies aqua racer. This aqua racer is actually created out of all ceramic. Ceramic of course is a substance that is unscratchable so you won't be able to scratch it on anything other than a diamond once again. It's a nine on the Mohs hardness scale. This is something great for the ladies. You can get the carbon or sorry the the white ceramic or the black ceramic looks like coal. These are great watches. Not only are they perfect for taking out and wearing around throughout the day because they won't be scratchable, but they dress up very nicely as well, starting at a great price point. And this is going to be the new ladies link with the diamond bezel. So this is a very special brand. You'll see great discounts on it this cruise and the best selection of it are going to be in your ports of call. Make sure you stop by the port shopping desk or call me on the port shopping hotline to find out where to find Tag Heuer and where to find the best selection of it. You will see many pieces of the in Diamonds International, or if you're going to Grand Cayman, you'll see lots of them in Kirk Freeport as well. Call me or get a VIP card to find a boutique nearest us, and I'm going to make sure I get you a great brand discount on Tag Heuer. Tag Heuer, never crack under pressure. In theory, you run with your legs. In theory, you play the guitar with your fingers. In theory, Stunts are done by doubles. In theory, you can't score in every match. In theory, you crack under pressure. All right, now next up is a watch brand that I don't think many people have heard about, but it's actually my pleasure to introduce a watch brand that has become one of the top most talked about watch brands in the entire Swiss watchmaking industry, and that is a brand that I love to introduce you to called Bremont. Now, Bremont is a watch brand that started, uh, unfortunately, out of a tragic story, out of a, a, a brotherhood, a family in England. Now, Bremont is a company that started from two brothers and their father, Yuan. And as men growing up in the household, the father, Yuan, always taught their kids how to build everything. They were fans of high quality mechanics. They were fans of engineering in every way. One of the things that they built more often than anything else was airplanes. They would build refrigerators and desks, fans and house clocks, but they were huge fans and partners of aviation and they were building planes throughout their lives. Now, as they grew older, they started flying planes them themselves and the two sons, Nick and Giles, actually became very accomplished pilots. They were doing an air show one day, I believe it was Nick who was flying the plane with his father Yuan over London when tragedy struck. They were flying the plane and something malfunctioned with the engine and they had to make a crash landing and they wound up crashing the plane. And in this crash, the father of the two boys, Yuan, was killed instantly on impact. It's a tragic story. Unfortunately, the father died, but fortunately, Nick survived. And though he broke 22 bones in his body during this airplane accident, he did wind up making a full recovery and surviving the incident. Now, after that, the two brothers were devastated and they combined their minds together and said, what should we do? How do we commemorate our father and how do we move on from this in life? And what they decided to do was start a watchmaking company. And this watchmaking company that they decided to start was going to be something different, something that had never been seen before in the watchmaking industry. And what they decided to do was to build watches that were going to be much tougher than any other watch brand that they'd seen ever before. So what they did was they spent 10 years in research trying to build a watch brand that could be tougher, more durable, and more rugged than any other brand that had ever been seen before. One of the first things they did was they went to a steel manufacturer and they said, we need you to create a new type of tempered steel that will never scratch or never break. And what they actually created after 10 years of research was an unscratchable steel that was patented. Their steel is seven times harder than all of the steel used in other popular watch brands. 
Diamonds, making it the toughest steel in the watchmaking industry as is known today. These watches are designed to be beaten up and used in hardcore outdoor situations, which is why people like Bear Grylls are using them throughout all of their expeditions nowadays. Other things they did, they're using 18 layers of anti-reflective coating on their bi-layer sapphire crystal on both the front and the back of their mechanisms, which means these watches are not only durable on the case themselves, but they have 18 layers of anti-reflective coating and unscratchable sapphire crystal embedded directly into the watch. They also decided to build watches for military. In fact, nowadays, almost 40% of Vermont watches in their production are sent directly to military squadrons, not because they want to promote to the military, but because the military is requesting these timepieces to be used in battle scenarios. In fact, these guys, as partners of aviation, have actually created watches for some of the biggest magnates in the world. After they started selling watches, big, big, big time aviation partners started coming to Vermont and asking them to be in partners with them. One of them was the Martin Baker Ejection Seat Company. Now, Martin Baker Ejection Seats are actually built to eject pilots from fighter jets in the heat of battle and when the plane is broken and going to be crashing. Now, one thing that Martin Baker demanded of Vermont, if they were going to do a partnership with this watch, a special model for the Martin Baker side, was that they demanded that these Vermont watches had to be built to the same toughness standards that the Martin Baker seats were built to. In that sense, they had to build watches that had to be completely anti-shock resistant. That means they couldn't be damaged by any vibration sent through the watches. They had to be built to over 100,000 feet of elevation, which means these watches could be ejected from fighter pilots. And they even had to put them through salt fog testing and vibration shock and electromagnetic field testing. And then lastly, they had to prove that the watches wouldn't lose any of their time once they were ejected from a fighter pilot at Mach 3. That was an incredibly tough incredibly lot amount to ask from Vermont, but they did it. They built an incredible watch called the Martin Baker 3 and the Martin Baker 2, which are available for purchase for you. And you saw there on the screen with the red bezel on the side. These watches are designed to be ejected from fighter pilots. And every single one of these watches with the anti-magnetic, anti-shock and anti-scratch coating on them is available for you at incredible prices in your ports of call. They build watches for all other teams. They've built watches for the Team America Oracle's Cup Squadron that are demanding high quality, very rugged watches to be racing with at sea that have incredibly high water resistance. They're also creating watches for military squadrons that are doing scuba diving. Their S2000 watch with one of the highest, most luminous bezels that allows you to see the dark, uh, see the watch in darkness, especially in low light scenarios. That watch is certified to 2,000 meters of depth which is almost, it's over 6,000 feet of depth underwater. Absolutely insane pressure testing on these watches. They've also partnered with high class expedir expeditioners like Kenton Cool. They've summited Everest multiple times. They've been taken to the bottom of the ocean. They've even crossed the entire Antarctic Peninsula in negative 40 degrees Celsius. These are watches that you can take anywhere in the world, will never be damaged and will always look great. Let me show you a couple of beautiful models. This is the Vermont Alt 1C, a gorgeous hand-built watch with a nice leather strap around the outside of it, low polished steel on the outside with a beautiful cream colored dial and anthracite dials for the chronograph in the inside of the watch. One thing beautiful about Vermont is the all classically styled British aesthetics. These watches are not overstated, they're not overly recognizable, and they're very classic and very exclusive. This is a watch that shows high class without having to scream the audacity of saying, I am a beautiful, high, collectible timepiece. This is the Martin Baker 2. As you can see here, it comes in multiple different styles, and the Martin Baker 3. It also has a GMT hand on it. This is an extra hand on your watch that allows you to set it to a second time zone. So you can always have a secondary time zone. Pilots use this all the time so that when they're flying through time zones, they always have a marker on what time is the GMT time, Greenwich Mean Time, somewhere else in the world. You can see the beautiful aesthetics on the side of the casing here. The casing has all been textured with the tempered steel, and there's even the small design aesthetics, the logo of Vermont inside of the crowns of these watches. Beautiful, gorgeous piece. Come see my Vermont U2 with the blue color dial later on this cruise. You'll also see the Alt-1C, beautiful rugged 
rugged time pieces as well. And you're also going to see the back of it here. This high polished steel with the beautiful automatic movement there. This is all tempered to the same high quality as the brushed steel as well. Gorgeous time piece there. And this is the Alt 1 Zulu time. This is another very high a uh, high polish watch with a beautiful inside markers, lots of different colors on this watch. And just so you know, one of the things that I think is important to mention about Vermont watches is that every single one of the Vermont watches is built so that you can interchange straps on it. You can put the aviation Velcro straps on it, you can swap it out in two minutes and put an all different dressy leather strap on it, then you can switch it out into a steel strap if you'd like as well. You can buy up to 150 different straps for every single watch, they all fit each other and you just got a custom order them online. In fact, when you buy a watch, Vermont is going to give you a beautiful black leather case with the watch tool that allows you to strap out any of those any of those watches. Beautiful stuff. The last one I want to mention for you is something they're very proud of. This is the Vermont Boeing. The Vermont Boeing is a watch where Bar Vermont actually partnered with the large uh, aviation magnate, the engineering magnate of Boeing. Now, this is something that Breitling had been trying to do for many, many years, and Vermont was the only one to ever partner with this aviation magnate because they actually demanded of Vermont that they build their watches to the same specifications they build their engine turbines from. So in that sense, they actually are building their watches from the same grade of steel and titanium that are going into the engine turbines, and they're even using the same technology in lug nuts and screws to attach the straps to the Vermont that the Boeing engines use fascinating pieces. I'm going to show you a quick video here of Vermont themselves. One thing you'll notice in there is the Vermont Wright Flyer. They're so well tied to the aviation industry that the, the Wright brothers actually donated a piece of the Vermont or of the Wright Flyer to Vermont that Vermont has actually been using inside their watches. Other things you're going to see is the partnerships with Vermont for Jaguar, where they're building uh, a Vermont watch that is all unscratchable, once again, that is modeled after the speedometers and dial mechanisms inside the dashboard of the Jaguar cars. Beautiful uh, affiliation with that company as well. And you're going to see a lot of expeditioners like Kenton Cool, who summited Everest with Vermont watches as well. So take a look for Vermont chronometers this week. One thing that's neat about them on the bottom of the watch, since they have all been built in Henley on Thames, which is just outside of London, instead of inscribed Swiss made on the bottom of the watch, they have paid homage to their heritage and written London on the bottom of their watch. So this is a watch with a great heritage to it. It's a great commemoration of their father and this watch company is called Bramont. You will find them this cruise only at Diamonds International and Diamonds International Watch and Design are their partners here in the Caribbean. Make sure you come see my watch. Ask me to see it in person. I'll let you try it on and we can find one for you. This is a watch company that I call half the price and twice the durability of a Rolex. Vermont chronometers only at Diamonds International. Great. Now sticking on to the aviation page, I'm going to give you a few more bits of information about Breitling. Now Breitling is another very, very well heritaged company from Switzerland. They were actually partners with Tag Heuer back in the day. They came together and used many different pieces of technology and grew from the same routes at one point in time. Today Breitling has become the official partner of aviation and along with many other of their pieces have become the watches that most pilots in many planes wear as they're flying back and forth. This 
this is a high production watch company, meaning you're going to see watches from Breitling produced in about 750,000 per year. As opposed to Vermont, they're only producing about 4,000 to 8,000 watches per year. So you get uh, a very high exclusivity in Vermont, but you get a very high recognizability in Breitling. Now, Breitling is an aviation company that calls themselves the inventors of the modern chronograph. And they, like Vermont, are all COSC certified chronometers, which means that these aviation style watches are amongst the most accurate on the planet and have to be certified by a board of technological associates in Switzerland accurate to a certain degree after lots of testing. Now the Breitling is a watch that I like to call has amazing recognizability and ownership prestige all at once. This is a watch that people are going to notice from across the room. It's a watch that has beautiful classic stylings to it. You'll notice the bracelet. You'll notice the finish of details on the piece of the watch themselves. This is something that's absolutely incredible. So you're going to see a lot of their pieces this cruise as well, again with the 15% discount. You're going to see the Chronomat here. This Chronomat is a very high polish watch. This is a watch that I'm going to be adding into my collection in the future and it makes a very bold statement. There's beautiful pieces inside the dial that lift off of the dial that show a high level of relief with multiple different colors. This is a 44 millimeter watch and they will even come in bigger, more bold styles as well. Here are other color options in the, in the, uh, the Breitling Chronomat. Chronomat. You can see the steel and the blue, again with the high polish. Very shiny, looks absolutely amazing on the wrist. This is the Breitling Navi Timer. Again, another one of Breitling's super classic timepieces that was designed specifically for aviation. In fact, this beveled bezel around the outside of this watch was designed to be used as a tachymeter so that your flight teams, your pilots can change the tachymeter to calculate flight speed while their flight gloves are still on their hands. Lots, again, of different color variations in the Breitling Navi Timer as well. This is a watch I'd also like to add to my collection. This is the Avenger Blackbird with the low polish black steel military looking pieces with the Kevlar straps on them and they have a divers collection as well. This is the Super Ocean 2 with the ceramic bezel, another unscratchable watch. Again, these are all available at tax and duty free prices up to 15% off in your ports of call and this is another one called the Transocean GMT. Beautiful classic styling, the woven steel bracelet with the chronometer on it and the chronograph on it and the GMT hand. So lots of beautiful options for you. Make sure you come and speak to me if you'd like to go shopping for a Breitling this cruise. Give me a call at the port shopping hotline or stop by my port shopping desk. Check your Compass cruise hours and you're going to see those listed there for you as well. You'll find many of them at Diamonds International or other boutiques throughout the Caribbean. Just give me a call and let me know. I'll get you the world's best Breitling, uh, world's best pricing on a Breitling this cruise. All right, now next up, we're going to talk about a very cool watch company called Philip Stein. Now, Philip Stein is a watch company that has done something that no other watch company has done. Philip Stein has actually embedded into their watches something called natural frequency technology. Now, natural frequency technology is something very, very interesting. Inside their watches, they've built a natural frequency technology disc that helps balance the natural frequency of your nervous system. The natural Philip Stein frequency inside your body has made this watch to become called the feel good watch because it makes your body feel and operate at a healthier level. Let me tell you a little bit about that. The natural working frequency of planet Earth is 7.63 gigahertz. That's something called the Schumann resonance that was discovered I believe in the 70s. The Schumann resonance is the natural frequency that your body is supposed to be firing its neurons at, especially in your brain. But we have all this technology around us that provides us with all of these different magnetic fields that means that your brain actually can get thrown off of that natural frequency and you can actually be operating at a different frequency, either higher or lower. The side effects of having your nervous system out of that frequency start with high stress levels. They start with inability to fall asleep, migraines, low blood pressure, and all of those things as well. Now, Philip Stein invented a natural frequency technology disc inside of their watch that allows your body to balance itself to the natural working frequency of the Schumann resonance. It's not a magnet. It basically acts like an antenna inside of the watch. As it sits next to the neurons that are inside of your wrist, it actually balances those neurons to the correct working frequency of the Schumann resonance. And within minutes or maybe an hour or so of wearing this timepiece, your body will then be operating at the correct working frequency of the Schumann resonance. Now, 
That being said, Philip Stein is called the sleep watch because they did a 2009 sleep study that showed that wearers of Philip Stein fell asleep faster, stayed asleep longer, and woke up more well rested and had better dream quality than either the control group or takers of the prescription drug Ambien. That's an amazing fact. You will see your crew wearing Philip Stein, you will see your guests wearing Philip, Philip Stein. All of them know that this natural frequency technology, it helps them do their job better. I never go a day without wearing Philip Stein technology. I've got a bracelet that has the exact same technology inside of it that I wear if I'm going to be wearing another timepiece, for example. Or if I'm wearing my Philip Stein, it will do the same thing. I always wear that bracelet before I go to sleep because it allows me to go into REM sleep much faster, stay in REM sleep, and wake up more well rested. In another study done in 2010, the Philip Stein watch company actually found out that stem cells that were exposed to natural frequency Philip Stein technology were producing up to 26% more melatonin in the human brain than stem cells that were not exposed to frequency technology. That's a massive increase. Melatonin, by the way, is the chemical in your body that allows you to, to regulate your circadian rhythms. It's, a, it's a, what allows you to fall asleep, basically. And so for that reason, many people that have had trouble with insomnia or trouble sleeping in the past have bought Philip Stein and have been using Philip Stein to make sure that they get a good night's sleep. They also make tons of other tools that are used to aerate wine or protect the, uh, the, the freshness of fruit. The natural frequency technology has taken the world by storm. In fact, Oprah herself has promoted Philip Stein natural frequency technology on her favorite things show three different times. And that is something very impressive. Oprah, by the way, does not promote anything that she is paid to promote. She only promotes things that she feels are going to provide well-being for her guests that are watching her show. So that's Philip Stein for you. They also have great interchangeable straps, and many of them also have the dual time zone function on them. My watch is one of them. You can see here that this watch right here has two watches in it, basically. The time for me up top and the time for my loved ones back at home. Time for me and time for love. I like that as well. So it gives you the option of setting your time zone uh, depending on where you're traveling to, which is another great option in Philip Stein. Great, so moving on to the next piece I wanna talk about is actually the watch that I'm wearing, and this watch is called Hublot. Now Hublot is a watch company that has been around for many years and is classically known as a watch company called the Art of Fusion. Now Hublot is a watch company that is fusing many, many things. First of all, I like to think that Hublot is fusing the art of ancient timekeeping making, which is the componentry that has been used for hundreds of years inside these very high mechanics, with a modern spin. They are fusing modern design, modern aesthetics into one of the most beautiful, powerful, rugged looking timepieces on the market today. Hublot is for the serious timepiece collector. Somebody puts a Hublot into their collection when they're ready to say to other people, I care a lot about collecting timepieces and I care a lot about people noticing my watch. It is one of the most exclusive timepieces on the planet with less than 40,000 pieces being made per year, meaning that ownership of a Hublot puts you into the upper echelon of timepiece ownership. Wearing a Hublot is also a massive statement. I picked up my Hublot last year after collecting about eight different watches because I wanted to feel that next level. Every time I put on my Hublot, I feel like I've finally made it to a a certain level in life. It's something I get tons of compliments on. These are watches that have rugged aesthetics to them, powerful shoulders, a lifted bezel that is reminiscent of the royal oak, giving that strong image of the classically styled fine Swiss timepieces that made timekeeping such an importantly collectible item in the past. These timepieces also have an incredibly high recognizability. In fact, I was watching the Video Music Awards a couple years ago and they showed Leonardo DiCaprio there. And Leonardo DiCaprio was clapping and they zoomed in on him and then zoomed in even more just onto his Hublot. And I had a good laugh to myself because I think that the photographer, the filmographer, was saying that your watch is more beautiful than you, Leonardo DiCaprio, which is a pretty, pretty funny statement. But these are watches that have been partnered with some of the biggest names in the world because of their marketing and because of the way that they make people feel. FIFA is number one for them and they're probably very, very proud of their partnership with FIFA. They're also partners of the Dallas Cowboys. They were partners 
partners of the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers, Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant. There are limited edition watches in each one of those teams and squadrons. They are also partners with Usain Bolt, the fastest runner in the world. They are also the current partners of Ferrari. So you can get Ferrari branded watches. You can even get them custom made for you. Now this is a timekeeping company that has really pushed the forth thinking of innovation. As a partner, who's, uh, as, a, as a watch company who has called themselves the art of fusion, another thing they're also fusing into their timepieces is different materials. For instance, my watch right here, the band on this watch is all natural alligator strap leather on the outside with all natural rubber on the inside. That's amazing, that gives you the best of both worlds. So now I can have that nice, classic, dressy, black leather look on the outside of my watch and I can take it out into the Caribbean and jump around and run through the rain with it because that rubber on the inside Inside, if I sweat or if it gets wet at all, it doesn't damage the leather at all. That's something that's amazing to have. Hublot is actually one of the first timepiece companies to ever put a, a, a gold watch onto a, um, sorry, onto a rubber strap. First company to put gold onto a leather strap, a rubber strap. That's amazing because pretty much every company that you see nowadays has been creating gold watches on rubber straps. It's because of Hublot's innovation in the industry. Here's what we're looking at. Take a look for these. This is the two main pieces <clears throat> that you're gonna see. This one right here is the classic Fusion. This is a black dial watch on the back with beautiful reflective steel for the hour markers. You can see that lifted bezel gives a very powerful sheen and look to the watch. The most powerful thing about a Hublot is the angles on the outside of the watch. Stark angles on the shoulder, very powerful rigid crown, and it gives a beautiful shimmer off of the watch as you move it around. This is their Big Bang collection, and this is one of the most highly fused watches in the market. This watch right here has a ceramic bezel, which means it's unscratchable, and it has gold all throughout the watch that the case is built out of. The dial of the watch itself is built out of carbon fiber, and the screws are made out of tungsten, which is four times lighter and four times stronger than titanium. This watch right here has patented magic gold in it. Hublot is the only company who's ever taken gold in its 18 karat element and broken it down into its into the elements at a, an atomic level, at a, at a cellular level, and then rebuilt it with ceramics to create an 18 karat unscratchable gold. That's something that had never been seen before and has since been patented by Hublot. This is the watch that I'm wearing. This is the Hublot Aero Fusion. One thing that Hublot is famous for is the ability to skeletonize their watches. Skeletonization, of course, is where you're taking that timepiece and building it so that it's cut out inside the mechanisms and you can see deep into the movement inside the watch. Something very hard to do, something that gives a very high polished look and a very high collectible look as well. So contact me to find the best pricing on Hublot anywhere in the world this cruise. Again, there are some amazing boutiques if you're going to Grand Cayman, if you're going into Cozumel, if you're going into St. Martin, or if you're going into St. Thomas this cruise, or if you're going into Aruba, there are Hublot boutiques everywhere and you can find the top quality, top pricing on one of the world's most exclusive timepieces and that is called Hublot. Hublot, by the way, <clears throat> means in, in French it means porthole and as you can see the watch itself has been designed around the look of a porthole which is great for all of you that like going onto ships which could be all of you very cool stuff now Hublot is a rock concert and the next watch I'm going to talk about is the symphony orchestra to Hublot's rock concert they are technically part of the same company called the LVMH group and they are also owners of Tag Heuer but the other symphony orchestra to Hublot's rock concert is a company called Zenith now Zenith is an incredibly incredibly well historically respected brand in the Swiss watchmaking industry. Zenith is classically considered by almost everyone in the Swiss watchmaking industry to be the nicest movement inside any watch that's ever been built. The Zenith El Primero movement is what it's called, and this is the nicest engine we've ever seen inside a watch. This is the watch that you saw jump out of the hot air balloon on Felix Baumgartner's wrist and break the sound barrier falling from 128,000 feet in the stratosphere. This watch right here has componentry inside of it that takes 80 different professions of people over eight months to put together. I've been to the factory in Switzerland and I have never seen anything like it. The amount of time and dedication that these individuals spend building a high quality, incredibly rare, incredibly accurate movement inside these watches is completely unparalleled. This watch right here keeps track of up 
to 36,000 vibrations per hour. That means this watch is accurate to within one tenth of a second on normal timekeeping. That's the most accurate men's chronograph on the entire planet. In fact, this watch is accurate to within four seconds per year. That's actually more accurate than most quartz watches, which is something absolutely incredible. Now, Zenith, as a timekeeping company, is not producing many watches per year. In fact, they're still producing less than Hublot at only about 28,000 watches per year, making them, again, an incredibly exclusive watch to own. Many people have owned Zenith watches that are famous from the past. One of them was Mahatma Gandhi, owned a very nice pocket watch made by Zenith, and the other one is John F. Kennedy, also owned a Zenith as well. Now, the reason these people were owning these watches is because Zenith is classically known to be the father of timekeeping in many regards in the Swiss watchmaking industry. Their movements are so hard to create, they're so hard to build that they just can't build enough of them for the demand that's out there in the market. In fact, they have over 30 different patents on their movements that are used by other brands. Those other brands pay royalties to Zenith, and for that reason, Zenith watches are actually incredibly affordable for one of the nicest movements in the entire world. This is the Zenith Pilot right here. A very classic styling on this watch with a very simple uh, markers on the watch. You've got just one subdial for the second hand right there and then the minute and the hour hand on the watch. Beautiful, beautiful watch right there. As you can think of the name Zenith, Zenith means pinnacle. Zenith is the crux of anything that could be well done. And that's exactly what Zenith is. This is the same watch, the Zenith Elite in gold. This is a watch that I'm going to be adding into my collection. This is the Zenith El Primero with a chronograph on it with an open aperture so you can see the ticking of the flywheel and the movement inside of the watch. Really beautiful piece and the same piece in gold with all of the reserve to march and other complications on it. Beautiful timepiece. One thing that should be known about Zenith, let me just give you an idea of the quality of the mechanism inside of a Zenith. In 1984 until 1996, Rolex asked to use the Zenith El Primero movement in their Daytona. When Zenith agreed to that, they put that movement into the Daytona and the Daytona sold for about a regular price. It was about that $9,000 to buy that watch during that period in time. Zenith actually asked for them not to use that movement anymore and they took their Zenith El Primero movement back to be used into their own pieces. Now, since then, you can't buy that watch anymore. In fact, that watch that has the Zenith El Primero movement inside of that Rolex has become the most highly collected watch on the planet, or at least one of them. That watch, instead of $9,000, is now selling at auction for up to $60,000 per piece. The reason is, is because they want the Rolex case with the nicest movement in the entire world built inside of it. So if you're looking for an incredibly accurate timepiece, if you're looking for something with beautiful design aesthetics, that is the forefront of engineering in the Swiss watchmaking industry, the nicest movement on the planet, the name to think of is Zenith. And you can find them at tax and duty free prices at Diamonds International and many other stores and retail partners throughout the Caribbean this cruise. Give me a call on the Port Shopping Hotline or stay tuned on Channel 22 to find out my desk hours and I'll be at my desk making sure I can get you a great discount on a Zenith watch this cruise. Beautiful, beautiful timepiece. All right, now next up, the next watch brand I want to talk to you about is a watch company called Shinola. Now you may be familiar with Shinola as you've heard from them in the past. They were a shoe polish company during World War I and World War II and they had a famous phrase, you don't know shh from Shinola. I can't say it on TV, but you can fill in the blanks. It's the same company. Now this company is now creating hand-built watches made in America. They're a company who is dedicated to rebuilding the entire industry of Detroit specifically the manufacturing district of Detroit. They're building handcrafted bicycles, they're using leather from the oldest working tannery in the United States, and they're building watches in qu of quality that haven't been made in the U.S. for a, an entire generation for the most part. Shinola is a company that's very proud of its heritage and very proud of its workmanship being made in America. And for that reason, they actually stamp the back of all of their watches made in America, and they're guaranteeing their watches for an entire lifetime. And that's something that's incredible because I think that one thing that America America has fallen into nowadays is that they are 
exporting all of their goods into different countries to produce them much cheaper. But Shinola is not one of them. They're a classic American company that said, why don't we give jobs back to the people that have been laid off from the automotive industry? We'll put them into our building. We'll hire urologists from other areas in Switzerland. And then we can build handmade watches in the entire United States. And this is a company that gives you a warranty for a lifetime. And if, if nothing stamped made in America screams quality to you, it should be their warranty for a lifetime. That means no matter what happens to this watch in the future, they'll replace it for you for a lifetime. It's a beautiful watch company. All of their watches start at about four to $500, and you get a 15% discount on them, which you'll never get back in the States. And that's Shinola for you. Take a look for this little video and they can explain it a little bit better than I can. Shinola is available in almost every single one of your ports of call. Contact me for a VIP card or I'll tell you where to find it, okay? Welcome to Detroit, the new watchmaking capital of America, where a long gone industry is beginning its ascent. Here, in 30,000 square feet of Midtown. Using steel, leather, and labor to make watches of quality that haven't been made this way in this country for more than 40 years. It's an effort to retake our place, out on the factory floor. It takes work to return to form, but we're up for it. Starting with the reinvigoration of a storied American brand and of this storied American city. We are also crafting hand-built bicycles and leather goods made with hides from America's oldest working tannery. We are doing this because we believe in the beauty of industry, the glory of manufacturing. We know there's not just history in this town, there's a future. It's why we came, creating a community that will thrive through excellence of craft and pride of work. Shinola, where American is made. Now, a couple other watch brands I'm going to run through before I finish up. The first one I want to mention for you is an incredibly high recognizable watch brand called Cartier. Now, Cartier has long been considered the jeweler of kings and the king of jewelers. And you may have heard about many of their timepieces and their jewelry brands on the red carpet. It's the same one. Cartier is a French luxury company that was started hundreds of years ago and is considered to be one of the most collectible and highly recognizable brands across the planet. Now, Cartier basically needs no introduction. One thing I do want to tell you about Cartier is that Cartier has an incredible balance of high recognizability and very high exclusivity. You don't see many people wearing them, but you will see that many people recognize this watch on your wrist. A Cartier is an incredibly beautiful movement. I've got my ball on bleu here, and the reason that I bought a ball on bleu and a Cartier in general is because this is a watch that's never going to go out of style. A ball on bleu or any of their timepieces all use the classic Roman numerals on the dial with either a white or a black or a gray or a blue background. That is a watch that's never gonna go out of style. It was something that was in style when your grandfather wore it, and it's something that's gonna be in style when you pass it down to your grandchildren in the future. They've got a lot of beautiful pieces for you. This is the ball on bleu, like I showed you. The beautiful circular round bezel right there. This watch was designed to be neither masculine nor feminine. It truly bridges the boundaries of aesthetics. It's simple, it's smooth, it looks amazing coming out of a tuxedo sleeve. And this one next to it, the Calibre, is an incredible option for the gentleman as well. They also have many beautiful timepieces for women and they have prices for a, for a luxury jewelry company and a luxury watch company starting at just over a, a couple thousand dollars, which again, is an amazing price point for an incredibly highly recognizable and incredibly highly collectible watch. Contact me to find out an authorized Cartier dealer in our ports of call. You'll find many of them at Diamonds International or you'll find them throughout other boutiques throughout the ports of call in the Caribbean this cruise. Make sure you contact me to find out a little bit more about Cartier. And another brand I want to talk to you about that is the Italian version of Cartier in many ways is Bulgari. And Bulgari is another watch company that produces tons of different kinds of jewelry from the Bulgari B0 and Octo necklaces and rings. These are pieces that are incredibly famous on the red carpet as well. Contact me if you'd like to go shopping for Bulgari jewelry because there are some beautiful boutiques for Bulgari jewelry in St. Martin, in Cozumel, and in many other places throughout the Caribbean like the Grand Cayman Islands as well. Their watches are also something that's it's incredibly beautiful as well. Their watches are classically designed to have very nice Italian style to them. This right here is the Bulgari Octo with that B0 
beautiful octagonal bezel on it. This is one of the thinnest watches you can find and very lightweight on the wrist. Beautiful all handmade Italian leather on that. And again, a beautiful dress watch that's going to look great with a tuxedo or fantastic if you're dressing it down with a pair of shorts as well. Bulgari is an Italian designer brand made very famous by none other than the famous Liz Taylor. And in fact, uh, she was as once quoted as saying, I don't think there's another word I know in Italian other than Bulgari. So it's a high quality, high end, very highly recognizable and exclusive Italian luxury brand with all Swiss made componentry. Contact me for a VIP card to save tons of money on a Bulgari this cruise and I'll tell you exactly where to find it. And the last couple watches I want to mention for you, if you're somebody who has previously owned a Citizen in the past or a Seiko in the past and you're getting ready to jump into that Swiss watchmaking industry, a great brand I recommend for you is going to be Raymond Weil. Raymond Weil was a watch that I first collected when I started collecting fine Swiss timepieces because of the introductory level price point. Raymond Weil is a beautiful Swiss made all family owned watch company that builds their watches in Switzerland all under one roof. They're building their watches so that the introductory level consumer, somebody who's not looking to spend more than a couple thousand dollars can get an all handmade automatic Swiss component sapphire crystal movement inside of their watch for an introductory level price. You can get all of these beautiful pieces at under a thousand dollars. In fact, they do have some ladies and men's combinable uh, watch combo combo packs where you can get both of them for less than $1,500. In fact, that's a savings of almost $700 compared to prices back in the States. It's a beautiful movement company and something that you should consider first if you're someone who wants to just jump across that border into the collectible timepieces era. And you don't want to go and break the budget on something that you're not sure uh, is going to be something that is for you, okay? So make sure you check out Raymond Weil. They're going to be in St. Martin. They're going to be in St. Thomas. They're going to be in Cozumel. Pretty much everywhere throughout your cruise that you're going to see uh, out here in the Caribbean. Contact me for a VIP card. I'll send you to an authorized dealer for Raymond Weil. And next up, this is a fun one for the ladies. I want to show you the Fendi watches. Now, Fendi is a handbag designer. You know, many people consider it to be a designer of luxury goods for women. And they also are making fine quality handmade Swiss timepieces as well. And this is one I really want to show you. I want to highlight the Fendi Crazy Carrots. It's something so totally different. The dial markers on the watch, the hour markers on the watch, where you're going to be seeing the, the time on there. In this watch, they've built them all out of colored gemstones. So if you're somebody who wants to see something different, something unique, something that changes color, take a look at the Fendi Crazy Carrots. With a flick of a finger, you can change the dial markers of the gemstone. How cool is that? <laughs> It's something super different, it's something very unique, and you're getting a very high quality Swiss made timepiece. So give me a call if you'd like to see Fendi this cruise, they're gonna be available in almost all of your ports of call. Other watches you're gonna see this cruise, Tissot, the T-Touch Solar watches. These watches are great for those of you that are expeditioneers or doing things outside that want to have a quartz watch on you, that want to be able to track things like compass and location. They can track the barometric pressure. They've got weather predictions. They've got an altimeter on them. They're powered by solar, and they've got all different kinds of functions, up to 18 different functions on the Tissot watches. Give me a call or give me a mention if you'd like to go shopping for Tissot this cruise, and also for Movado. There's a great collection of Movado out port. Movado is another Swiss made timepiece company that has sapphire crystal and the iconic clean dial with that symbol at the top, just that symbol, that, that circle that allows you to see the 12 o'clock spot. That symbol symbolizes the rising sun at noon and the oneness of the universe. It's a beautiful company and there's great discounts on Movado out in your ports of call this cruise. Contact me if you'd like to go shopping for Movado. And you're also going to see Bulova out in port. Bulova is 140 years in the watchmaking industry. They have one of the most accurate quartz watches on the planet and they have the best tax and duty-free discount of any watch company. They're giving 35% off of their watches here in the tax and duty-free market. All of those are going to be available for you and the best selections are in your ports of call at Diamonds International and Diamonds International Watch and Design or other retail partners throughout the Caribbean. Again, let me know if you'd like to go shopping for Bulova. Give me a mention and I'll tell you exactly where to find them this cruise.
And the last watch I want to mention for you is a watch called Bomberg. Bomberg is something completely different. It's definitely something stylized for those of you who like motorcycles and tattoos and rugged, manly things. This watch has a lot of different designs on them from samurai warriors and dragons, but it's a handmade Swiss timepiece with a great mechanical movement inside of it. And the cool part about Bomberg is you can take off the dial of the watch, you can clip it on to the pocket watch piece, or you can clip it onto a desk clock, and that gives you a lot of versatility and changeability, so you can even bring back the pocket watch style, which is something that's very interesting. So thanks again for tuning in with me on my watch seminar. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope it piqued your interest a little bit into what it means to be a fine Swiss timepiece owner and collector. To me, it's all about the relationship with yourself and your relationship with your watches. Every single one of them represents a different mood to me. It makes me feel different when I wear it. I get different people that comment on them and I use them for different occasions. There are certain watches that I use for sport. I take my Bermont rock climbing. I take my Bermont underwater. I use my Swiss timepieces like my Caliber 11 Tag Heuer for dressing up or showing something unique depending on what I'm wearing. My Hublot is a statement piece. This is something that I wear when I really want to make an impression on somebody or when I really want to stand out and get recognized. Or I'll wear my Cartier if I want something sleek, something simple to go with a tuxedo that's not going to overpower other pieces. Or I'll wear my Shinola if I'm outside running around in the grass or doing a, a field trip somewhere where it's going to get wet. I call it my Safari watch. So they're all used for different things. They're all used for different purposes and they're shown for different reasons. So treat yourself this cruise. You'll save lots of money. You've got an expert on your side and there are dozens of other watch brands that I didn't get to mention that are available for you this cruise. Probably the most notable of all of them is Rolex. So if you'd like a Rolex or if you'd like a GG Le Couch or a Ulysse Narden, if you'd like an Omega or if you'd like a, a Vacheron Constantine, a Longan Sons, if you'd like a Breguet or if you'd like an Audemars Piquet, Please, come mention any of these watch brands to me. I will do my best to find exactly the piece you're looking for, and I'm here to go to work for you. Thanks again for tuning here on Port Shopping Live. Again, my name is Lee. I'm your Port Shopping Guide here on board, and I will do whatever it takes to make sure that you get a fine Swiss timepiece into your life this cruise. And trust me, when you go home and you bring your fine Swiss timepiece home, other people are going to notice it. You'll be amazed at how many people come up to you and say, hey, wow, that's a beautiful watch. And it's something that means a lot to you. It's something that's gonna be passed down to the future generations. So treat yourself this cruise. Let me help you. Give me a call. My number's listed in the cruise compass or come by on my desk hours or see me during my live seminars or just stop by in your ports of call. I'm in Diamonds International and Diamonds International Watch and Design in every single one of your ports of call and I can send you to a watch specialist or myself to help you out with your purchasing. Thanks again for tuning in on channel 22. We'll see you around the ship and we'll see you around on Port Shopping Live. Ciao for now.